All right, well, moving on to retirement, because you might be traveling to a nice destination there. According to a recent survey by Ega, the over 50 set prefers a phased out retirement over just straight up leaving work. Mental stimulation, social engagement, and the non-monetary aspects of work were major influences on how people retire. And guys, I think that does kind of make sense. Yes. I don't know if you just want to go cold turkey into not doing anything. I mean, sometimes people do. Um, but what do you make about that? Yeah, it, it would feel like falling off a cliff. It's like you spend all so many years working so hard, and all of a sudden it's like you got nothing to do today. Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and in the study, they were talking about how sense of purpose was one of the reasons why a lot of the workers who are over 50 years old want to. They want to retire, but they want to phase it out so yeah. that it's not just an abrupt change. It's like you know, part-time and all that, yeah. Grant, I know that you're all about the movement that is to retire early, though, right? So, I mean, like, oh, how, do, how do you put these two together? Is it just because now you have financial freedom, you can do whatever you want? Exactly. So you reach a point in your life where you have enough money that you feel comfortable that you have enough money to live for the rest of your life. But the idea is work actually makes us happy. You know, it keeps us healthy. You look at studies and it shows that if you retire too early and you don't go back to work, your health actually declines prematurely. And so working is actually really good for us, but there's a huge difference between doing work that you want to do as opposed to work that you feel like you have to do in order to make money. And so that's the real big shift. And this study doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. I mean, you want to keep working, doing something you love. The idea is you want to retire to something, not really from something. Exactly. Well, and the, the question I have when you, when you say that you want to get to a point where you have enough money, how do, you, how do you ever know that you have enough money to actually retire if you want to retire early? Because you can't, how do you, how do you, you know, there could be an emergency that happens. If you have kids, they may need expenses or you might not have thought of, you know, vacations for them or camps. There's so many expenses in life. How do you know? I think the, we often ask the wrong question, which is, you know, how much money do you need to last for the rest of your life? When the first question needs to be, what kind of life do you want to live? And so, and then how much money do you need to live that life? So it's really a mindful process about the more you know about yourself and your family and what makes you happy, the better you can set yourself up for life. So certainly, emergencies can always happen, but the idea is you're insulating yourself based on how you're investing and how you've kept your money, that really whether the stock market goes down over a couple of years or something big happens in your life where you need some extra money, you've built in layers of cushion to insulate yourself because at the end of the day life is really I think too short to not really yeah. enjoy it and right. so you want to spend your money having the most happy life that you can and not really living in fear so you can insulate yourself on that I think you know the world that we live in tells you you need five million dollars to retire mm -hmm. but that's just such a blanket statement and that, that you know the fact is who you are is going to grow and change over your life and so how even at 33 can you tell me how much money I'm gonna need right. the idea is how can you have a relationship with money and save enough money that your relationship changes as you grow yeah. with it well we're speaking in generalities I want to get a little bit more personal